Sometimes on this channel, I like to make videos about things that just aren't practical. Today is one of those videos. In the past, I've made impractical videos like uh, a way to kind of jankly put together a SATA expansion card for your computer so you can do add things like more hard drives. I've also made videos about how to install things like Windows on a Chromebook, which is super impractical, but it was just something to do. Today, we're gonna do something even more ridiculous and we're going to install a version of Windows RT on a Raspberry Pi. So before we get into the actual nitty gritty of downloading everything and creating the bootable media and all of that sort of stuff, uh, let's talk about some of the things that you're going to need to make this work. Obviously, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi. That's kind of what this whole video is based around. You're also gonna need a micro SD card, something in the 32 gig or above range is ideal. You'll also want um, a USB adapter so you can plug your card into your computer. Um, ideally, you'll wanna plug this into a USB 3.0 port uh, to do all of this. I did it on a USB 2 port and it took more than an hour and a half to do everything it needed to do. Whereas on the USB 3 port, it took about half that time. So um, that should also give you a that this is a lengthy process. You'll of course also need a mouse and keyboard. The mouse is optional, but it does make things a bit easier while you're going through the install process. You're also gonna need some sort of an external power supply. Of course, you're gonna need the micro USB cable and the wall board that you'll plug in to give it power. Uh, this is one of those, those cases where you can't just plug into the USB port on your computer, your laptop, your monitor, your whatever. You need a dedicated power source that puts out five volts and at least two and a half amps. Anything less than that will throttle your CPU down to somewhere in the 600 megahertz range, and it's painfully slow to go through this process when you've throttled your CPU that much. Okay, so I think with all that being said, we've got our, our item list out of the way of things that we're going to need. Uh, I guess the next thing to do is jump over to my desktop where we'll talk about the process of downloading and getting everything ready to install on your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so the first step that we need to do is actually download a file that will create our Windows um, installation. So what we're gonna do is gonna go to uh, the, this website. The, the link will be in the description down below. Definitely go down there to find the correct link. And here we're gonna be given a, a series of options that we'll need to go through and select. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is select the type. Uh, what we want here is the Windows final version. Um, uh, the other things will do other things, but for our sake, we want the Windows final version. Next, we've got a lot of options here, um, ranging from version 1703 to 1903, um, and a few in between. Now, you'll notice that some of these have an x86, some of them have ARM64 or x64. And what we wanna focus on here is the ARM64 versions. Now, I've tried version 1803 and I didn't have any luck with it. So, um, I did have good luck with this 1903 ARM64 version. So, I'll go ahead and click on that. Next, we'll be um, asked to select language. Uh, for me, uh, what I'm doing, I'm gonna select uh, United States. You could select all if you wanted to, but I think that's a bit unnecessary. So, just select the one that's relevant to you. Below that, we're going to select additions. Um, you can do home or professional. Uh, either one should work just fine. I've only used professional though. Um, and I can say that uh, when it's installed, it is actually activated. Um, so I guess go for the professional if you want. Uh, if you find that home is better, that's fine as well. Um, but I've only used professional. Next, we've got an option to download or select a type of download. And um, this one, we're just going to select download ISO compiler in one check run downloaded CMD file. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. So now we can see over here at the top right, uh, some things have changed. Now we've got a couple of options, a couple of links here that end in .cmd. And what we wanna do is go to the one that says creating ISO, um, this ARM64 professional, this very first link, we're gonna right click it, click save as, and then we'll just go ahead and click save. Okay guys, so for this next part, in order to run that command file that we just downloaded, there's a really good chance that you'll have to disable your antivirus. I use uh, something called Viper for my antivirus and uh, it wasn't having any of it. It was it was saying it was malware. I really believe it's a false positive. Um, I've had nothing adverse happen on my system since I've done this. So just disable your antivirus protection in order to run the command file. Okay, so once you've disabled your antivirus and you're ready to go, uh, you're gonna run that command file and then you're going to go get lunch or dinner or go do something because this process will take about half an hour. Uh, I've actually put a time code in this so you can see it. But uh, it took uh, about 29, 30 minutes for this to do everything that it needed to do. Um, so I'll just kind of let you see what that looks like real quick and then we'll move on. 
Okay, so once that's done, you should have a Windows ISO in your downloads folder. And if you've got that, it should be about 3.8 gigs, give or take. Uh, once you've got that in your downloads folder, the next thing we'll need to do is download the WOA uh, deployer for Raspberry Pi. I will have a link for that in the description down below where you can go over to uh, their GitHub page and download it. Uh, once you've downloaded that, extract it and then also mount that ISO file. You can either right click the ISO file and click mount or you can just double click and either one uh, will do the same thing and mount that file or the ISO for us. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is actually open up that WOA deployer file or folder. Uh, we'll scroll down to the bottom until we find the executable we're looking for and then we'll go ahead and run that. So then on the deployer app, you'll wanna go ahead and make sure that you select your micro SD card. Uh, it will list all of your hard drives in there. Uh, make sure you select the right one. Obviously you don't wanna overwrite anything important that's on a different drive. In the section below that, it says something about uh, a Windows image. And what you'll wanna do is click on the browse button, go to where your ISO is that you mounted, go into the sources folder, and then select the install.wim file. And then below that, uh, you'll click the deploy button on the deployer app. And then again, you're gonna wait for quite a while. Uh, this will take another half hour or so. Again, I'll have a time code on that so you can see. Um, but it will take quite a while for it to do everything um, because it's got to recompile a bunch of stuff. Um, and so the, the computer you're using to do all of this, um, the more powerful it is, the, the faster this will go. So if you're doing, a, doing this like on a dual core or a quad core or something, it will go slower than say like on mine with an eight core. So uh, just know that your computer's performance will determine how long this will take. Okay guys, are you still with me? Um, if you are, congratulations and thanks for making it this far. Uh, really the hard part's over at this point, we're just kind of at a waiting game. Um, the first, the next thing we'll wanna do is actually unmount that micro SD card, plug it into our Raspberry Pi, of course, plug in our keyboard, our mouse, our monitor, and our power supply, and then immediately start tapping the escape key on our keyboard to get into like the BIOS of the Raspberry Pi so that we can make some changes to, uh, to the CPU itself. We wanna make sure that we don't limit the CPU to 600 megahertz. We also wanna make sure that we change the boot order to boot from the micro SD card um, instead of the, the Raspberry Pi. So those are the two big changes that we're gonna make initially. And then at that point, it's just a matter of going through the install process for Windows. And again, this will take some time. Time codes will be on here. Uh, I can tell you this whole process start to finish as I was recording all of this B-roll stuff uh, for, for the installation process it took me about two hours. So you're getting into something here and you're, you're almost there. I promise you're almost there. It's just a matter of uh, just kind of going through the Windows install process at this point. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay guys, so here we are like two hours later with Windows 10, um, even though it's the RT version, but Windows 10 nonetheless, installed on a Raspberry Pi. And the question here is why would we do this? And the answer to that I would hope would be because we can. Not because we're trying to solve any problems, not because we're looking for solutions, but just because it's something to do, something to try. I went through this process uh, a few different times to see if there were any shortcuts, ways to speed things up, things like that. And there were a couple of things that I noticed. Um, for about the first hour after it's up and running, the CPU cores, all four of them are going to be maxed out. Um, even if you're running at 1.2 or 1.4 gigahertz, um, they're gonna be maxed out while it's running all of that startup, new operating system crap in the background. Um, so after that, it kind of calms down a little bit, but it's still not practical to use this in a day-to-day -day environment. Uh, one of the reasons that I really wanted to show this is because um, of a video that I made that I talked about earlier, and that's installing uh, Windows 10 on a Chromebook. There was a lot of 
there were a lot of people that were upset that the, that the video I made was only for um, Intel processors or Chromebooks with Intel processors in them, I guess. This may be a way to uh, install Windows 10 on an ARM-based Chromebook. I haven't had a chance to do it yet, but I think that this is kind of a stepping stone in getting to that direction. Um, I would have done the Chromebook version of this and I still may, but I don't have an ARM-based Chromebook to do this on. So uh, I know that's one of the things that I want to look at getting so that I can uh, kind of repurpose this video uh, in the future to, to do that and see if it actually works. Uh, if you get it to work, I definitely let me know down in the comments. Um, I mean, if you get the, the Raspberry Pi to work, great, let me know. But if you actually manage to get it to work on a Chromebook, book. I'd love to hear that as well, just to make sure that I can do it. Or if you guys take this video and learn something from it and, and figure out how to do that on your Chromebook, that would be amazing as well. So I really think that's it. Uh, like I said, it took us a couple of hours to get to where we are with Windows 10 installed on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, again, just for the sake of doing it, not because it's practical. So all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video. Thank you.